Hello, everyone. My name is Shama. I am with Girls and Geese. We are back for yet another Real Talk panel discussion. I'm super excited today. We are talking about all things being in your 60s and training jujitsu. We have a fantastic team of women on today. Um, I'm super excited to have all of you ladies on. If you take an opportunity, please introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about yourselves, and then we'll go ahead and get into this discussion. Let's go ahead and get started, Betty. Hi, I'm uh, Betty Broadhurst, and I am a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm 67 years old. I started training when I was 54 years old. And I got my black belt at age 64 um, on the podium at Masters Worlds, uh, so which was very exciting. So I had a, did not expect it at all. So it was very, you know, it was a thing that I just kept training because I wanted to train. And I never thought that I would live long enough to see a black belt when you start at 54. But, you know, the time passes and it did. And I competed, you know, throughout my jujitsu journey. And uh, the next thing you know, I had a black belt. And now I'll be getting my first degree uh, this this coming fall. So I'm really excited. So that's a little bit, just a very brief history about me. Excellent. And you also run an uh, organization called Roll Forever. Roll Forever. Which, you know, I kind of did that because of being older. And so when I started the company, we named it Roll Forever. And, um, you know, I, I can elaborate on that later. But yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I you know, uh, formed the company and uh, it's active now. And it's about, it, it's about helping uh, professional jiu-jitsu athletes and also bringing seminars out to local communities that don't have the opportunity to go to big cities and train. So it helps the professional athletes that way. And it helps sponsor some um, athletes from other countries, but it does visa sponsorship. So it's been, it's been very beneficial. It's like, a, it's, a, it's part of me kind of trying to give back to the community. Amazing. No, that's awesome. I love what you're doing. And, and then we also have Kim Blake on with us. Go ahead, Kim, please uh, introduce yourselves. Tell, talk a little bit about, who you are and and your jiu-jitsu journey. Okay. So I am Kim Blake. Um, I started martial arts um, at the age of 42. Um, I will be 62 um, in a couple weeks. <laughs> and I received my black belt in jiu-jitsu in 2018. And to my surprise, um, I was the first... Um, female jiu-jitsu black belt in the state of Oklahoma. Um, when I started jiu-jitsu at 42, um, it was something that I did um, as um, this stem from a, a conversation that I had like a few months um, before. It was during the holidays and I met with my, my friend. She is a, a long time um, friend, confidant, mentor. Um, she asked me, was there anything that I, um, in my life, that I regretted not doing? And I said, I always wanted to do martial arts, you know, since the age of 13. But my dad um, told me that girls didn't do that. So my sons, who were, I believe, um, 13 and 16, Somewhere around there, they had just received their black belts in karate. And I had beginning to um, regret that I hadn't received my, my yeah, that I hadn't um, went down that that, uh, that um, road. So I got on the mat first day. I excused myself. I went to the bathroom. I cried big, ugly tears. I came back out. I was like, I'm going to leave this place as soon as. Just the bell rings. But there was somebody there that um that was my angel in disguise. He he saw that I was kind of upset and probably snot still drooling and eyes red and he's like you can do it. So uh, the rest is history after that. Um I started competing um in karate 
um, a couple years into um, the karate, after starting karate. And I started um, jujitsu um, about the same time I started competing in, in karate. And then um, after that, I started competing in smaller um, with venues of um, jujitsu because there weren't, that I didn't know of, any bigger uh, jujitsu places. And then there was Naga. So I competed at each belt um, in jujitsu. Um, and also have a black belt in Ketsugo, um, which is an American um, jujitsu. And it's um, basically um, like wrist locks, any type of manipulation of the, the joints. So in groundwork. So that's the way. <laughs> oh, I'm also a uh, author. I have um, two uh, international bestsellers where I'm a co-author. So I'm Karen Burns, and I'm actually turning 60 in a couple months. So I'm, I'm not in the 60 club yet, but I'm heading there. Um, I started martial arts uh, 25 years ago. I started with Kempo Karate, and I did that for many years. And I got my second degree black belt in Kempo Karate. And then I did a lot of kickboxing during that time. And so a lot of um, fighting. And then that just got really hard on the body. So as I started getting older, I was um, in my early to mid you know, early third, late thirties, early forties. And so I was just doing some karate after that. And then they started teaching jujitsu at the school that I was work, uh, you know, kind of working at. And I decided to do jujitsu because everybody would seem like they were having so much fun doing it. And I had never wrestled or anything like that other than like with my brothers and stuff, but it was a lot of fun. And so I decided to continue on, and, and here I am today. I'm a fourth um, degree brown. I'm getting ready to test for my black on April 27th. And so I've been really, you know, working really hard, you know, trying to get prepared for that. Um, we, my husband and I that I met at the karate school that I was training at, uh, we own our own school. And so I work quite often, morning and evening. Um, we teach adults and children, and we teach judo, jujitsu, and Muay Thai kickboxing. So I'm kind of, you know, a little bit of everything there. Uh, we don't really teach karate anymore. People don't seem to want to do traditional karate as much anymore as the MMA style stuff. It's become real popular. Yeah. So um, I do teach a, a woman's self-defense class uh, that's bringing some of the people that are more our age in. I think they're really afraid to come in and do what we do. You know, they look at it and they're like, oh, my goodness, you know, I don't want to wrestle some 20-year-old young kid. And just bringing them in and having them start you know, ease, you know, going into just the self-defense portion of it kind of eases them into it. And then, you know, after a while when they feel more comfortable, you know, having bodies on them, because I think that's kind of a weird, you know, feeling when you've never had that before, being up close and personal like that, then start working on a little more sports aspect of jujitsu. So, but I, I'm, I don't work anymore other than the karate school. I used to be a dental hygienist. And so I've just, all I do is work at the school. And well, that's not all I do. I have a big family and I take care of two of my grandchildren. And just, I'm busy woman. Busy woman. <laughs> I'm sure we are all. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious. I, I, I'm curious how you, how you guys got started. Betty, you started in your 50s. What brought you to jiu-jitsu in your 50s? What, what, how did you get introduced to it? Did you have any prior martial arts experience in it at all? No, no, no martial no? arts experience at all. No. 
it was tall turkey. Um, I had gone through, I'm divorced and had been divorced, had two adult children, and they had left and gone um, off to university and were out of town. So suddenly I had the empty nest at 53, 52, 53 years old. And many of my friends, and I was working full time as a pharmacist, um, many of my friends, um, that I socialized with, I was in a book club, like a wine, which was my excuse to get together and drink wine. But I mean, it was like a book club once a month. I I played some tennis and golf, but there was just something missing as far as like a community type atmosphere, you know, because you would gather once a month for that. But that's fine. Then everybody would disperse. And with tennis or golf, you know, it's kind of like a you get an appointment, you go do it, and then everybody packs up and goes home, you know. So it was not, I was still felt like I was missing. I guess when you're alone and you're divorced and your kids are grown, you really do have an empty nest. And there's this need sometimes that you don't realize. Um, but just, out of the blue, uh, because I was a pharmacist, I worked shift work. I was always been a hospital pharmacist. So sometimes at night, I would work 3 to 11 or get off late at night. And um, unfortunately, I went through a phase when I was like 52 or 3 that I had a stalker. It was someone that mm-hmm. had been, you know, unfortunately, like was parking outside of my house. I got a restraining order. Um, it was someone that I hadn't met before and didn't go out with, which is, you know, another bizarre thing that happens to, you know, unfortunately. And, you know, restraining order is just a piece of paper. Really, if somebody wants to get their hands on you, they're going to do it because you can't enforce it if there's no one there. So, um I was looking for ways and I saw uh, a brochure about self-defense. And it was uh, being held in a church community building on a Saturday. And I thought, well, you know, that would be something interesting because when I get off work at night, I'm always looking over my shoulder or having a security guard walk me to my car. And I thought, you know, that would be one more tool in my pocket. So I went. It was taught by two black belts from a local uh, jujitsu academy. And I really liked it. And, you know, we did this, just the basic things like the bear hug, the trap and roll and all that. And I, they gave me a brochure. I talked to them after class a little bit about my personal situation. And I was the oldest person there. There were younger ladies there. But um, so they invited me to come by, you know, for a free session and just to look around. They said this might be beneficial for you. Because what we learn in a one-time class is not going to save your life. I mean, you know, I mean, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks that don't. I don't have a false sense of security, which I knew that you need to go down a deeper rabbit hole to really protect yourself. Uh, so I did go. I made an appointment. I went. I signed up for. I took a private lesson and really liked it and did not feel comfortable going into a group though. So I signed up for like. 12 private lessons every Saturday. So what happened is the instructor would always get someone from the Saturday class to come an hour early and to be an ookie for me. So that way he could help me. So every Saturday I would have a new partner, which was sort of nice. I was learning just the very basics, not so much self-defense, but, you know, like, you know, the basically from trap and roll, then let's teach you how to do an arm bar or whatever. And then I would sit and kind of look and peer into the class that was going on after my private lesson. Well, after the end of probably eight or nine weeks, I had rotated through just about every student that was in the Saturday morning class. So all of a sudden, at the end of the 12 weeks, he said, well, Betty, you know everybody in here. There's no reason you're not join." And I thought, you know, he's right. I've got to be friends, you know. And there was one female, a uh, college at a local university. She was 22, and the rest were men. But I think the one-on-one, I think the, the instructor did a very good job prepping me because number one, the age bothered me because, you know, no one there was over 35. I mean, probably the oldest member was 35. Um, But it was, I felt 
wanted and I got to know them on a personal level on a Saturday morning in a very informal setting, like a private lesson. And uh, the transition was very easy. And so from then I started going to Saturday. Then when I found out that, oh, there's classes on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday night. So I can make Monday night and Wednesday night and two or three of the same people in the class. Yeah, I come on those nights. And it just kind of snowballed from that until I was at the six month mark and I was loving it. And then they started talking about competition, getting ready. And I said, <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to do that. So, <laughs> you know, I started trying with the kind, even though I was a white belt. Um, and I went out and decided, even though I was at age and there wasn't going to be anybody my age, I wanted to do it because there was just something so exciting about, you know, traveling with a group, going to like a Naga or a whatever kind of uh, small local tournament that we go get a hotel room. It was almost like a field trip kind yeah, of feeling. Yeah, so yeah. I, <laughs> what yeah. was happening, I think, to me is the sense of community was happening. Then it was fulfilling a real need. But I was also gaining a lot of self-confidence because you lose a lot of self-esteem when you're in your 50s and you're single and you see all these young, pretty women and you're divorced and your kids are gone. I mean, something happens internally that you you feel like you don't have, you know, you, your hair's gray now and, you know, you don't have the shape you used to have. And so I found that this, I was, my confidence was coming back. Um, and you had something you were proud of when you achieved, and you had people cheering for you. And uh, I was eating healthy because they were eating healthy. And, you know, it, the whole thing just snowballed into like a healthy lifestyle. And so I stayed on the competition track and in two years got my blue belt and uh, just kept on. And then I relocated different gym, you know, so I've relocated three times uh, and just recently, you know, since Christmas, um, come back home to be with my parents. But through the journey, that's why I started, you know, it was it was kind of like a, a movement. But I have found that it was probably one of it was almost like I had this life before jiu-jitsu and then I had this life after jiu-jitsu and everything that happened from that time I started has been nothing but positive because of the friends the community and worldwide community um because of going to tournaments and going to once I got my blue belt I was determined I was going to go to master's world so I went the first year I had my blue belt and uh when I found out further into my journey that when it was time for pans, we couldn't sign up because women couldn't sign up for pans. So um, one of my mentor, my mentor is a lady named Felicia. O. I had heard about her when I was a white belt and read about her, and I got to meet her at my first um, Masters World. So she was on a committee along with three other women, and we helped uh, work with IBJJF on um, adding beyond master one because just up until six years ago pans and the opens if you weren't a master one you had no competition so i competed at many events some of the IB, local ibjjfs uh against 30 year old women all the time you know because we didn't have divisions for women master two and above so that's a real new one. You, the only thing, you only had one thing a year, and that was IBJJF Masters. And it was like the old folks tournament. You know, nobody yep. went. <laughs> <laughs> yep. was it, was, it was the old and folks finally, world. <laughs> right. And that was the only tournament where older people could go unless you wanted to compete against a Master One. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, so anyway, that's kind of the story there. So I, I love how you went from a book club to arm bars <laughs> <laughs> i think that right there is like an ad for all women in their 50s who are going through empty net book club didn't work try arm bars <laughs> exactly rear exactly. naked chest yeah. <laughs> oh i think it's fantastic so i'm yes, curious sir. you a lot of you came into jujitsu kind of later on and, and Kim, you touched on it, too, of, like, growing up, it just wasn't something that girls did, mm, you no, know? It, like, it, it just not. wasn't something, it wasn't ladylike. And I'm curious mm -hmm. for all of you, did you kind of experience that? Is that something that maybe kind of deterred you from it, you know, kind of 
I guess jujitsu would be kind of masculine, right? Like it's more mm -hmm. of an aggressive kind of thing. Is is that something that you experienced as well? And and like did was coming into jujitsu kind of breaking through that kind of stereotype as for you as well going in? When I when I started jujitsu, I started like I said, I started karate first because that's something that I, that I wanted to do. Um, I got good at, at kicking and, and combinations, and you know. The older you get, when you step on the mat, once you make up your mind, you're intentional. Um, and then they started introducing this jujitsu. And I was like, I don't want no part of that. I don't want, you know, that's too close. That's too sweaty. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. um, they said, well, Miss Kim, they said, you know, if you're ever attacked, they're never going to say, okay, let's go. They're going to come behind you. They're going to push you on the ground. <laughs> and then are you? you know, will you save the kick? And I go, oh my gosh, you know, that's the point. So I'm still stepping on the mat and I'm and I'm like, as soon as my head is covered, I'm like, tap, 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 stop. You know, that's, that's <laughs> it. But um, yeah, so it's, you know, from there, it was like a love, love, hate thing, you know, all the way up until like when I was, um, when I got my brown belt. And I said, well, there's a possibility. I'll just keep going until to see where this takes me. But it, it had always been a, a love-hate <laughs> situation for me. You're on mute again, Shama. What about you, Karen? Is there anything you'd like to add? Well, I grew up a tomboy. Um, so I never felt kind of weird about being around men and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, my I had brothers, the older brothers, and so I hung out with all the boys and did boy things. And but how I got involved in martial arts was, you know, I always did like triathlons and stuff like that. And then my oldest son and my ex husband. Um, sign these contracts at the karate school and then just for three years and then decided they didn't want to go <laughs> anymore. And so I was like, well, gosh, I got to pay this anyways. I might as well go. <laughs> and so, you know, I started going and I, I was like, I really like this, you know, this is fun. I, I, you know, I was doing the karate and then I got into the kickboxing and I never even really knew about jujitsu. You know, I'd heard of judo and, and stuff like that, but I never knew anything about jujitsu until um, years down the road. And then they started teaching it in in my school that I was taking it. And my my younger son started taking jujitsu. And then I was like, oh well, hey, maybe I'll try this. And and I loved it, just loved it. And you know, I've had my ins and outs with jujitsu being injured and getting burnt out and having to take a break. And then, you know, recently with my, my mother, I was taking care of my mother. And, and so, you know, but the community is the big thing for me too. Just like Betty said, you know, I, everybody I know and that I hang out with is all part of the jujitsu community anymore. You know, I still keep in touch with my friends from high school and stuff, but you know, the people that I'm around every day, the families, because our gym is like really family oriented. The kids, you know, we do little, you know, things for kids you know, to fundraisers and stuff like that so they can do tournaments and all that. Um, yeah, no, I never really had any problem with the getting down and dirty and getting sweated <laughs> on because, you know, I had... I had dirty old brother, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. What advice would you, and, and I think it's kind of cool too, you touched on it, Betty, like, and, and you touched on it, Karen, as well, is like, what really helped you, Betty, was starting off with private, and I think that's something that's really awesome, because it did kind of gradu like gradually put you into the sport, I'm curious, you and you said you have classes as well, Karen. Um, what are some things or what are some advices that you maybe can talk 
uh, speak to like academies in like ways to attract more mature women, more mature athletes or, you know, not competitors, practitioners, period. What are some things that you would put out there to be like, hey, this is a way to bring in this demographic? I mean, just for myself, I I am in that demographic. So, you know, I could be like, well, hey, you know, I'm this age. And if I can do this, you know, you can do this. And I said, of course, you know, you've got to kind of work your way up in there. You know, uh, but how I attracted some of those women were doing the self-defense stuff they feel and in women's only classes that's how i've i've been drawing you know some of the women that are you know not 20 and and that that helps and then the family community that we have you know some of the mothers of the parents that bring their kids so you know the grandmothers are coming in and and that you know it, it's been awesome we have a, a nice little women's only class that's just right now self-defense and so i think that that might help bring older women in like okay so i am in a demographic as well so i, I think that we are tough to comparison um like that you mentioned earlier we sort of uh, lose that that confident because things aren't like they used to be but pulling people out telling them that they have their own journey um, because you really can't force anyone to get on the mat. If they have a inkling that they want to hit towards the mat, you have to make sure that they understand it or make them feel that it's their journey. Okay. And will I be will I as in my journey will I fit in? And to me, if uh the red flag would be if I walk into a gym. You know, it's not the sweat. It's whether people are wrapped up, broken, you know, and blood on the geese. That's a, that's a, a to me, that's a red flag to, to take the high road. But just convincing people, you know, that it's their journey. You know, what is your journey? Is it to get fit? Is it to, like yourself, self defense is a, an amazing tool, you know, to get women into um on the mat but where do they go from there do they just want to go through the motions to me I, I think the mats are intentional um if you just want to get in shape if you want to do the you know continue in the self-defense but if you want to do the combat if there's, there's tournaments you know what's your journey and i think that the, they should look for those things that fit into their journey what about you betty anything else that you'd like to add um i think that one of the things and from my experience because my first competition was like in 2012 you know or yeah 2011 maybe and of course it was against someone 18 years old my very first match and i remember being there and thinking that you're ready but you kind of know in your mind that this person is faster, stronger, whatever. And there's like a almost 35, 40 year gap here. But she still had to work for it. I mean, I lasted a couple of minutes with her, but she does she didn't just sub me in five seconds, you know, or 10 seconds or something like that. So I was I still felt like I was winning. Um, if that makes any sense, oh, even yes. my yes. hand wasn't ready. <laughs> Celebrate that, the small victories. <laughs> right. I mean, that was a major victory for a 55 year old woman to step on the mat against an 18 year old <laughs> and uh, to get double blasted across the mat and ended up in her side control. But, you know, knowing how to shrimp a little bit and, you know, it took her a while to get that arm, but, you know, she had to work <laughs> for it. And to me, that was a victory. And I, had so many women that were observing and seeing me that were mothers, grandmothers, whatever. And it started happening more and more as I continued to compete because, like I said, at that time, there were no other 
older people compete. You had to enter the young divisions. Um, and then people would come up to me and go, I wish I could do that. And I would go, but you can, you know, because my daughter begs me to do it. And actually at the gym I was training, some of the mothers decided to start when they saw me out there. So because I could say to them, if I can do this at 55, you certainly can do this at 38 or 30, whatever their age was, mm -hmm. when they were almost 15 to 20 years younger than me. So as I continued, you know, my rank increased, I started competing. And I was on the competition. Of the school was a competition type school. And so I wanted to be there and to be a part of that. But then I saw, you know, there were women, I think it was in the Ronda Rousey days, you know, when she was just stepping in the ring, like back at then. So it was a big thing back then that, wow, women are in martial arts. So then I was even more proud because then I could say, <laughs> oh, even though I'm not Ronda Rousey's age, she's breaking <laughs> spiritual. In my own little world, I was breaking. And people would come up to me that I didn't know and go, gosh, that's amazing that you're doing this. And I started getting people to message me, and uh, it was it was nice. I think that, you know, before people, what they call, I guess they call them social influencers, I think that just your presence on the mat and how you carry yourself and how you, probably most of the matches I had, I lost. I mean, literally, I lost. I had, uh, But I carried myself in such a way that I walked off very happy and proud and proud to be a female and proud to be representing older women and letting them know it was okay to do this. And I think by leading by example and knowing also that I, I remember telling someone there is no end to this. This isn't like a professional basketball player that wants their knees blow out. They can't play anymore or tennis that wants, you know, we can get arthritis. We can sit at, I can get off my wheelchair and crawl onto the mat <laughs> when I'm at that age, you know, and I can still roll around, you know, I may not can walk, but I can crawl. I think Hen uh, Henzo Gracie may have said that at some point, but I mean, it's something that we, and that's why I, I named my company Roll Forever, because there is something too that there's a place for us all. And even though I'm probably not going to compete anymore, this last year was probably my last year of competing. Um, there are things that you can do. You can referee. We can judge. Um, I work for ADCC at the Opens now as a judge. I've refereed a lot of the local tournaments. Uh, I refereed the ADCC West Coast Trials in 2022. Um, you can get involved on so many different levels. You can coach. You can... so. Even though you may not physically at 70, which, you know, I'm, it's right around the corner for me. It's not far. You may not physically be able to be a, a competition athlete. You have so much knowledge as a, as from the years of experience, and you can share that and show your leadership in that manner also. And to let women know that this is an ongoing journey. It doesn't stop when you step off the mats. And I think uh, a lot of people in competition, and I guess maybe from starting older, I never had expectations of being a world champion black belt, you know, because I started at 54, you can't, that's not possible. But it get, that you know that a lot of them have expectations of if they don't get that by the time they're 30 or 31, they're over the hill. And especially now when these kids start at three and four, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, I think just trying to lead by example and uh, being a good role model on and off the mats uh, kind of speaks for itself at tournaments. And even when you attend events and things, you know, people become uh, savvy and ha how you carry yourself. So I was always very proud that I carried myself, you know, knowing that I probably was going to lose, but that I was uh, I was I was winning in life. I had a community. <laughs> And so, and it has no. been very good to me. That's why I say my life, I had my life before jujitsu and I had a life after jujitsu. That was chapter two. So. <laughs> the 2.0, Betty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, this is uh, that's awesome. So I'm curious, I know you compete 
uh, Kim, and you compete sometimes as well, Karen. I'm curious, how has your jujitsu like? Because Kim, you've been competing for a while, right? Mm -hmm. And karate mm -hmm. and stuff. And what changes have you guys seen? Let me rephrase that. What changes have you guys seen in the time that you guys have been competing? and the advancements and what are some changes you'd like to see going forward so mm -hmm. kim if you want to go ahead and, and kick that one off yeah i i i think um betty um mentioned it was a karen I, I can't forget but early on in the in the conversation i i, I seen that in karate okay there was always someone that was, was younger. I never seen anybody um, close to my my age in karate. As soon as a person turned 18, you're always, you know, fighting someone 18 and above, you know. Um, once a woman hit 38-ish, you know, they kind of disappear into the, the, the virgin, it's the second virgin on themselves. They stop, I guess, when they get, get hit, okay? But in jujitsu, you know, I run into a lot of people who have started um, at an older age, and it seems to to not end. You know, there's still people in their sixties and seventies. Um, you know, there's a few out there. There's some unicorns out there that are in their their eighties. Uh, I, I would like to to see the work that was started. Um, by women like um, Karen Peters and um, the other women who um, began the masters um, to 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 continue that work, you know, have have us, you know, who are out there that want to to compete. Because what I'm seeing now, if if you want to have an opponent, you know, you got to step way down to like um, masters four, like you have masters seven. You know, like they first stop competing. The men, Master Seven is growing. The women is kind of kind of shrinking, and they seem to be forced if they want to compete to compete. You know, at a at the four and the five, or even even a six. Yeah, there's no. Do you um, think that's because level. there's less women in that age group that are competing? Or is there less age group, I, women in that age group? Period. I think that we're being forced to, and and it's a it's a big deal. I mean, to lose that because you you there's a, a speed difference when you're on the ground. There's a speed difference, like a you know a micro thing could be a you know can cost you the the um the match. You know, and you travel and you you know you pay all that money. You know, because your your ego tells you, okay, I, I gotta compete because that's the only person I have to come to compete with. Um, I don't know. I would, it's a point thing. I just like to see more, more women, you know, out there. Uh, I don't want to show them that, Hey, that's the only thing. Um, I don't know if, if you knew back in 2017, you know, I had a match in a local tournament and I went up against a a, um, a wrestler, uh, what do you call it, a college state champion wrestler. I was like, I didn't know anything about wrestling. I never had a wrestler. The next thing I know, I'm on my neck and my whole body stiffened up, you know, and I could move for like 20 seconds. And then when I stood up, you know, like everything was like in, in pain. And the ref asked, do you want to go on? And I'm looking like, dude, did you see? <laughs> she slammed <laughs> me on my neck. <laughs> what did it want me to do? I thought I couldn't, you know, something horrible was, was happening. But at that particular time, you know, I was like, wow. You know, that's when I started thinking um, the, the age, you know, I have to be more um, cognizant of, you know, who, who I compete with, you know, on that, on that level, like in the gym, in the gym setting, you know, age is not a big, big thing, but a metal, you know, people go for the jugular, <laughs> you know, have to be prepared for that. But yeah, I, I would like to see more, more women, you know, 
out there, you know, that work that began with the whole panel of Karen Peters and maybe Betty was there. And I know there was a couple of women that were there that I, I, you know, I can't think of their names right now, but I would like to see that work continue. Mm -hmm. What about you, Karen? How has your um, jujitsu competition journey been? And well, I what you like started to competing in like a white belt, and and then you know did a couple, and then went into blue. And you know, I was older; I was in my forties at that time, and mm -hmm. fought an eighteen-year-old and just got smashed, and it kind of you know crushed my ego a little bit. And so I didn't compete again until I was in purple and and then even in you know when I was purple belt and in I think I was a master four I think there wasn't hardly anybody in purple belt division at master mm -hmm. four yep. and then um so I fought a couple times at purple belt in the masters I didn't do a lot of the local tournaments because there was it, there never was anybody my mm -hmm. age yeah. and I'm pretty cautious because you know, getting injured now is a lot different than getting injured when I was in my 30s. Yeah. It takes forever to heal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have so many other things on my plate that me being out with like a broken arm or something could, you know, really, really, you know, be a bad thing. Well, that would be a bad thing no matter what. But, you know, even now, I look at world masters when it comes out and there's a couple master seven couple master six sometimes and and especially the heavier gals because i'm i'm in the heavy range and so some of the lighter ones have more competitors in there i don't know why <laughs> I, we get heavier as we get older um but you know, I just don't think there's that many women our age that still compete. I, it, it's not that there's not us out there, you know. Do you think it's, it, it, it's an intimidation, like they don't want to get hurt or? I, I, mean, I think a lot of that is true. For sure. Do you think you know, that if have... more of them knew that, hey, there are other women in this age group out there wanting to compete, that would make it less intimidating? Because I get it. When I used mm -hmm. to compete in, in, I mean, I was in my 30s and I was competing against 18, 16, 18, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, my gosh, these, these yeah. kids are going for you. You know, <laughs> like they were yeah. some of the scariest competitors I went against with these kids, you know, so I get it, but. Do you think if there were like, hey, you know what? We're all in our 60s. Let's go compete. Do you think that that would entice women more? Like maybe if there's more master's opportunities for them? Yes, because <laughs> there's only world masters and then I that I, I can get to in Vegas. And then we have one master's tournament here in Arizona. And then pretty much it none of the other local tournaments go up into master six. So you're fighting masters ones or twos. So, and there's only, you know, a couple girls, my size, my age here in the state that compete at all. Anyways. What would you say to women in, that are in their masters? Why should they compete? Like, you know what? I have my grandchildren. I have my good life. I'm having like, why am I going to go compete? Why, why should I go compete? What would you say to me? It, it tests your skills. I mean, because, you know, you're training with the people that you train with all the time. You know, they, they know what you're going to do. You know what they're going to do. Going and training with some or competing with somebody else that has been training somewhere else. They have, you know, different things that they do. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be doing, you know, lasso as compared to your half guard stuff. And so that's that's good. That's I think that's a good thing. I'm I'm probably going to compete again um, this year in Masters, and it'll be my first time is black if I <laughs> if I pass my test. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty excited. I haven't competed since 2019, 
due to circumstances. So, but I'm ready again. I'm I'm getting in good shape for that, and and so I'm I'm waiting. <laughs> Hopefully this year there'll be some people, you know, in my age division. I think I'm still a master six this year. I think next year I'll be a master seven. If you're going to turn 60, I'm going to turn 60. Then you'll be the master seven. Okay. I thought it went by your birth year. Yes, so, um, 1963. So. 1963. And, yeah, I'm, six, yeah, I'm 64. Yeah. So I think I think it is if 63. If you're going to turn 60 this year, you can compete in master seven. Oh, okay. And if your well, birthday is December 31st. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fifty-nine well, year olds can compete in it. Yeah. Okay. Which is well, another it, thing is that you know Master Seven has become like the dumping ground mm -hmm. because <laughs> you have everybody from me that'll be like sixty-eight on their next birthday and fifty-nine year olds. It's the same mm -hmm. thing with the men. I'm not saying just for women, but you know it. It used to stop at Master 6. They finally added Master 7, and people mm -hmm. got over that hump. And now, you know, there's people that are now over 70. They're mm -hmm. not black. I don't think there are any at black belts at this time. Um, I think I'm the oldest black belt that was at Master's Worlds. Mm -hmm. But I had someone at, to compete, and then she dropped to Master 6 the last day, and I'd already paid for my expenses and everything so there, there's a lot of dynamics going on on why we don't have opponents there's a lot of dynamics going on because i think back 15 like 10 years ago when i was a blue belt and went to master's worlds there was absolutely um the i was a master six on paper but I lost 15 pounds and dropped to Master 4 just to get a match wow. as a blue belt. And then as a purple belt, I was a Master 6, but there wasn't anybody again. So I dropped to Master 5, and I could not lose down to Feather. So I ended up to Super <laughs> Heavy, and I fought a lady that was six foot two and weighed 260 pounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm I'm like medium middle heavy to heavy and i would um i fought her at her weight and then i turned around and did absolute because i wanted to compete mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i think i see now on a lot of these groups people is there anyone blue belt master three lightweight gonna sign up there's a hesitation to sign up and i think that if they don't see anybody in their weight class or even close, mm -hmm. they don't want to put the money out there and sign up or because like we, you said earlier, it's very expensive. The, the travel arrangements. I mean, when that girl dropped down to master six the, on the last day when you could change my, my heart sunk because I thought, you know, I wouldn't have come. I mean, you know, and now I have, I, I can't do anything. And, um, you know, I've got a hotel flight from the East Coast all the way to Vegas. So it was, a, there's just a lot of before, I think we were so hungry for a match, we would fight anyone. And I think now people are a little more selective. And I know that just in the gym I trained in, there were probably 11 or 12 women, but there were probably only one or two that will compete. It is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And also, another thing that has evolved is the no gi gi thing. Yeah. And I, my preference is no gi. Good luck finding a master's a 67 year old woman that wants to do no gi. <laughs> I, I can't find <laughs> 35 that wants to do no gi. But I mean, you know, that's just a personal preference for me. But I mean, I, I have a I like, I love the gi for six months and I'll go back to no gi. But but it seems like as I'm older, I like no gi better. I just feel it's more aerobic. I feel like I get a lot of good aerobic sand and working. But um, I just don't uh, think I think we we've we've recruited a lot of women, but they're not all for competition. And yeah. maybe that's why there there there's these gaps that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, look how far we've come, right? Here we are complaining oh, yeah. there's not enough 
master six, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, I guess that's what happens, right? Is we're aging up, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, I hope. I hope to go where you all are at. I'm about 15 years behind y'all and, and beyond. That's that's all of our goal, right? Like, wow. and so I'm curious, like, I know, like, for me, as I get older compared to when I was in my 20s doing this, like, I am more cautious, right? I'm a little bit more calculated. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to put myself in comparable positions that are going to possibly get me hurt. I'm curious, are there things that you all have, as you've continued and progressed in the sport, that you noticed that have helped you be able to continue and progress in this sport? And what are some things that you do as far as strategy? Like, not only just competition, but just training that you, you know, I mean, it, there's things like don't roll with the spazzy person, stuff like that. But I'm curious, <laughs> what is your take on it? What's the secret here? <laughs> I I like to train hard so I recover harder. Um, I do things from assisted stretching, I do ice bath, cryotherapy, grounding, um, red light, um, uh, eye terror guns, um, uh, vibrational um, sound therapy. I do a, a lot of things um, on a daily basis to, to help my body prepare um, and to, to heal under and to recover. So, you know, sauna, steam rooms, I'm, I'm there <laughs> just as much. You know how when, um, like when you're kids, when people say, one for me, what, one for you, two for me. <laughs> so that's my thing. You know, one hour of you know, jujitsu, two hours of recovery. So, um, yeah, so I think you, recovering harder helps me stay on a mat and eating right. Yeah, yeah. I think the recovery oh, go ahead, is the, key, key, the, the recovery mm -hmm. time is the key to longevity because yeah. Yeah. I know the people that are younger train every day mm -hmm. and I tried to when I was starting and realizing that my body can't do this, you know, and so... Even now, I only train probably three times a week. Uh, just and I use that extra time. I make sure I get plenty of sleep and I let my body recover. But you know, it's funny if you go too long without training, it starts creaking again. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, so you know what I'm talking about? There's a balance yeah. there. But I think it requires a little more recovery time with age. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but just being mindful of that, mindful of your partners. Ne mm -hmm. I'm never afraid to tell someone no. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of also I like to watch tape and study rules. I found that knowing the rules and the systems for whatever, whether it's ADCC or IBJJF, is in learning to play like chess and more intellectual also helps you. Um, and you can do that on your recovery day. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Karen? What is, what is your regimen look like? What, what um, is the trick to longevity in your in for you? I um, train, I train about three days a week, but I do like everyday weightlifting and stretching and I try and eat healthy and take supplements and just keep going. I mean, I do rest every day. I try and take a nap every day or at least lay down and relax and try and get a full eight hours sleep, which is kind of elusive to us older women. I think. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I have the insomnia a lot of times at the three o'clock hour. Um, but, you know, I do try and get that sleep. And even if I'm not sleeping, I'm relaxing. So, but definitely trying to stay off the sweets because I got a bad sweet tooth and um, stretching. I haven't done the sauna yet. My son who trains, um, he's the sauna master. And he's, you got to come to the sauna. And I'm like, oh yeah okay but that sounds it sounds so good <laughs> yeah, it i do like saunas 
Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the, the weightlifting has seemed to help me keep my muscle mass up because I know we lose muscle mass as we get older. And so that that's important to me. So. That was my next question is like, what are some benefits that you've seen that women in their sixties can find in training jujitsu? Cause I know that our bodies do start to change as we get older, mm -hmm. right? We have hormonal yeah. changes, we have physical changes. What are some benefits that you've noticed and some way, things to maybe encourage women in their sixties to like, Hey, you know, this is another way to kind of stay healthy and combat you know, um, these factors. Definitely. It keeps the flexibility factor in there. Um, like if I take a break, then try and go and invert, <laughs> you know, the, old back, the old back ain't liking that. Um, but you know, just that keeps that flexibility in your legs and your joints and stuff. And just, keeps the tendons working and 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 so I think that helps and then of course keep it helps keep your cardio up get your heart rate going um keeps your mind thinking that's a big one you know you're you're thinking about what you're doing you know oh I'm gonna do this so they'll do that it like Betty said it's like a chess game um so I think all of that factors in to help people you know keep young as young as they you know young in body <laughs> <laughs> the motion is lotion I, I, mm -hmm. I believe that you know whatever type of motion that you're doing and then you know like the betty and the parents that said you know it's playing playing chess right um it's just, it's like uh, the older people like my mom she used to like to do crossword or the, the <laughs> circling you know not even crossword <laughs> puzzle the, the, the circling the word search you know so i, I think jujitsu is that advanced <laughs> word search <laughs> yeah. the full yeah. body <laughs> experience yeah. <laughs> yeah anything you want to add betty being around young people keeps you young i mean the, i have grandchildren it keeps me young you know to listen to them talk to teach me something i like Oh, they're doing a TikTok dance, and I'll jump in and and play with them. You know, I mean, because it is part of the community, mm -hmm. and I think uh, it keeps you you're as young as you feel, and uh, it is not like sitting in a room. And I don't mean this and disrespectfully, but you know, if I had to sit around a room with people my age, none of them that didn't do Jitsu, or I'm not really sure if any of them would be having as much fun as I have at the gym. <laughs> I mean, so I think that, you know, not only just the mobility, but it's the mental the mental aspect and the social aspect all uh, help us with longevity. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, it's play too, right? Jiu-Jitsu yeah. is play. And so it we're still we're yeah. still playing like kids, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's amazing. And 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 one last question that I have for you guys is, you know, I know that they say in jujitsu, like it kind of mimics life, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of lessons that you can learn in jujitsu that can help you in life, and that's something that I personally have found and used a lot, you know. Um, but I'm curious if you're coming to jujitsu with more life lessons, how has that, how, how has that been in your experience? And, and like I said, I started in my twenties, so I have a completely different perspective, but I'm curious if that was a factor in your journey at all. And Kim's nodding her head. So I'm curious, Kim, what do you have to say about that one? Uh, I, um, I, I like the the song by Kenny Rogers, the gambler. You ever hear that? Um, you know when to yeah. hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to when <laughs> yeah. to run. You know, I think of jujitsu. You know, you got to know when to you know apply the pressure. You got to know when to reset. You got to know when to release and re, you know reset. You know, and you know you do it until the, the beat is done. You know, like the song says, you do jujitsu. You know, the end of the the match. Is, is a submission or, you know, you've outpointed somebody. So that's the way that I, I kind of um, 
uh, parallel the, the the two universes of real life and and the jujitsu journey. No, I like that. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's just, you know, you get out of it what you put into it, you know. Mm -hmm. I know when when I'm being lazy and, and then, I, you know, I just don't feel good and stuff and I don't put enough energy into it. And then I go back and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so far behind. Everybody knows <laughs> Oh, man, I got to catch up. <laughs> so that's that's definitely a life lesson for me, you know. You got to put that, put that work in. Yeah, so. no, for sure. What about, what about you, Betty? Well, I think going in older and things that I knew pre jujitsu life, mm -hmm. you suddenly find out that jujitsu proved a lot of those things wrong, that there are a lot of people that know a lot more about something that you than you that your body is capable of doing things you never thought it could do um that you ever had told me that i would not have a problem with a 200 pound man on mount with sweat dripping on me <laughs> you know, and that i would be grossed out by something like that you know all of these things in my pre-jujitsu life uh, i i just it disproved <laughs> I had to say, you know, I kind of learned a lot about myself or that, hey, it's not that bad. No. And <laughs> I learned a lot about there are a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me and there's always more to learn. It's such yes. an endless thing. It isn't mm -hmm. like a college degree room they hand you that black belt or that scroll when you graduate from college that okay, I know everything now I can go out and get a job. It just, there's always somebody that knows more. There's always someone that's going to submit you. It may not be someone in that class, but it's going to be your professor or a visiting professor or another opponent. So there's, you certainly learn that it's an, it's an open-ended uh, mm -hmm. education. Whereas I think before you kind of think, with some sports like tennis or whatever that you learn the rules and then you get out there and play. And then that's kind of the end of it. And, you know, you just play the best you can. Whereas we get proved daily that we aren't the best. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of a black male. <laughs> yeah, that is the truth right there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, well, it's been an absolute pleasure. I, I want to throw it out to you guys if there's anything that we didn't cover. I know we covered a lot of ground in this discussion, but if there's something you'd like to add, now would be the time, please. I mean, like I said, I I saw this as an opportunity for, for women in your demographic to maybe get inspired to give this a shot and try it out, as well as those that are following behind you that are already looking up to you going, yes, that's who I want to be when I'm a grandma, you know, like, <laughs> yes, I want to be choking people, you know, like, so yeah, book club's great, but I like yeah. arm bars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so if you have anything you'd like to add, please, that would be the time. Yeah, I think we've had a great discussion. And I think I want it to give hope to young women that just because you turn 30 or 32 and you're not at the top of your game, that you hang up the, the gi because or you don't have to you don't go back to the mats. There is life after 30, 40, 50, 60. <laughs> so <laughs> it's my it's, it's one of these things, I think, one of the very few sports that we can uh, be involved in that does allow us to continue. And, and as I said before, has other options where you can use your knowledge. Maybe you physically can't do it, but you still have other opportunities such as coaching, refereeing, or uh, just being an uki for somebody and demonstrating moves. Because I uh, there are certain things that I could do at 54 I can't do now, you know, due to like hip mobility problems. But mm -hmm. other than that, you know, I'm ready to go. So, and I hope that 
young women, you know, will see that and realize that, you know, you've got a lifetime ahead. You're going to get a coral belt if you keep up, keep it up, you know, because it mm-hmm. takes, what, 30 years at black to get a coral. And some of these kids are getting black belts at 18 now. I know. It's it's amazing. The I know, right? <laughs> I, um, 30 years will let's once. see. I don't think I'm going to, I'll be 90. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I didn't goodness. think I'd see black, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to be that 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 um, pillar of, of wisdom, um, especially to to all women of all ages. Um, my motto is, you know, you'll get there from here, you know, inch by inch, no matter what you want, what you want to do, you know, what your journey is, as long as you keep moving forward inch by inch you will get there from here 100 percent. i think the other thing women need to uh, people not just women but men male and female people in jiu-jitsu it's not a sport of instant gratification it is a long journey uh i mean i'm it was 11 12 years for me to get a black belt when you hear of some other martial arts or other sports where people get a belt pretty quickly you know or You've always seen the memes and jokes about, oh, my son is a second degree, whatever, you know, and he's only 15, you know, when they're comparing it to jujitsu. I think that it's uh, a long term goal and you can't worry about the belt color or anything like that. You know, I just try to get better each time and help others to get better. And I think that the it has given me much more than I have ever get. I mean, it has given back to my, my, me in my life so much uh, that I never dreamed at this age that the friends I would have, the places I've traveled, uh, the people I've met. So it is a very giving sport, and uh, the return on the investment is just phenomenal. 100%. Couldn't agree more. Oh, thank you so much, ladies, for being a part of this. Thank you so much for inspiring us. And you know what? You, you nailed it. We like we make progress by just showing up and yeah. showing other women it can be done. So yeah. you keep training. We'll keep getting. We'll start to fill up those master six, and then we'll be complaining about <laughs> we need a master's nine. Why is there not a master's <laughs> nine? <laughs> there you go. Yes. So, so we always got something to complain about, but hopefully it's not the same things and we're always progressing forward. That's oh, right. Right. we're always that means there's more people on the mats if we exactly. do that. Good, so. Exactly. And if we got all these 18 year old black belts, you know what? We're gonna need some coral belt divisions in there in the next 10, 15 <laughs> years. So exactly. might as well add that to the complaint list. But you know what? Progress. We're getting yes. there. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Long term goals. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, ladies, well, for being ladies. part of this discussion. Thank you for inspiring. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Keep on rolling. All right. Roll forever. Thank you. Thank you. Roll yeah. forever. Roll forever. <laughs>